Hello. Hi, is this Amy? Yes, speaking. Hi, it's Beth from BBC Newcastle. Oh, hi. Hi, are you all right to come on in a couple of minutes? I'll just put you through the studio and you can listen to what's happening. Yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, all right, cool, thanks. We live the time of our lives for 100% longer. From Monday, time of our lives will be twice as long. Get the year from midday, then again at three. With me, Simon Logan. Time of our lives. BBC Newcastle, radio for the North East. Up and down, boys. Oh, it's good to show that. Um, how do you feel about robots? Do you look forward to the day they can do your cleaning, make your tea, put the bins out? Or does artificial intelligence AI terrify the life out of you? I've got to stop talking like that just because it's Halloween. Um, after 10 o'clock, Lisa will be looking into the pros and cons of robotic assistance. Now this morning, a few scattered showers here. Some of them heavy as well, then bright spells. The drizzle is nearer the coast later on. Eight Celsius, Jill. How are the roads? Uh, starting to look a little bit slower um, as you're heading northbound on the A1. So, um, from Chester Street, really, the usual build of traffic there. That takes you all the way up towards the Angel of the North. And the end of Sunderland Highway is looking busier as well. You've got about four minutes on the end of the 12.31. Coming off the A1 at the 184, you've got nine minutes, which will take you across the Regis Bridge. End of the Selling Bypass down towards the Tyne Bridge. You're looking at seven minutes. And southbound Central Northway, pretty much the same. End of the Coast Road, if one up slightly, two, three minutes around a single lane of traffic. Got uh, works in place there, and you can tell uh, it's half term for parts of Newcastle because um, this time last week we had queues about 25 minutes along the coast road, so it really does make a massive difference. If you're heading north into the Tyne Tunnel, five minutes at the other side, a further nine takes you to the Silverlink, and southbound seven minutes down to the Silverlink roundabout into Sunderland city centre. That's looking good at the moment across all bridges. Traffic moving very well. Uh, the same for Durham City, though bunching a little as you head around Neville Cross and public transport running without report of problems. So call me 01912 Essential North East travel. Alfie Joey and Anna Foster at breakfast. BBC Newcastle. Radio for the North East. Alfie and Anna at breakfast. Spot on, 10 to 8, time for your 10 to teaser. Here we go. In the cartoon series, The Amazing World of Gumball, which my kids love, what kind of creature is Gumball Watson? So you've got this on Cartoon Network and probably loads of other channels as well. It's run for quite a few years, very popular. If you're on the school run, if you're having your breakfast, you might know this, you might want to join in. I'll give you the number in a sec. Can I get a pen? It's in the sideboard. In the cartoon series, The Amazing World of Gumball, what kind of series is creature is Gumball Watterson? Here's the number, 0800 234 You can text 81 333 Start your text to BBC. If you didn't get your pen, I'll say it again in five minutes' time, and we'll read your text out. BBC Newcastle, radio for the North East. It is nine minutes to eight right now. Um, so it was one of the longest budgets for decades, actually. I don't know if you watched it an hour and 12 minutes. Didn't manage to um, watch it all. The Chancellor announced yesterday, though, that mental health services will see a big boost over the next few years. There are many pressing demands on additional NHS funding, but few more pressing than the needs of those who suffer from mental illness. And today, I can announce that the NHS 10-year plan will include a new mental health crisis service with comprehensive mental health support available in every major A&E, children and young people's crisis teams in every part of the country, more mental health ambulances, more safe havens in the community, and a 24-hour mental health crisis hotline. These new services will ensure that people suffering from a crisis, young or old, can get the help they need. So Jeremy Corbyn, came back with the Chancellor's promise to spend more on mental health isn't enough, he says experts reckon the new money is only half of what's needed. 
We can talk now to Amy Wilson from Blythe, and Amy's living with borderline personality disorder, and she was sectioned when she was just 18 at a psychiatric unit, and that unit was 127 miles away from home. Uh, Amy, good morning. Thank you very much for chatting to us this morning. Hi, good morning. Um, Amy, first of all, just before we get on to what that experience was like for you, can you just explain what borderline personality disorder is? Because a lot of people might not understand it. Yeah, um, when I was first diagnosed, it was called borderline personality disorder, but it's now called emotionally unstable. Um, uh -huh. The diagnostic criteria when I was diagnosed was about having unstable relationships, um, difficulty with overwhelming feelings of anger, self-harm behaviours, suicidal, um, sometimes hallucinations, and it usually stems from having a trauma in your childhood. That is, you know, such a um, an extremely distressing thing to happen. But a, a unit that's 127 miles away from home, what was that like? It was really scary because, you know, for all that time I'd been brought up with just me and my mum. So we were really close and to be that far away from her, um, it just felt like I didn't... And to be away from my friends as well, it felt like I didn't have my support network in the community anymore and... Um, I just felt quite alone, even though I was in a hospital surrounded by people 24-7. There weren't mm -hmm. people that I'd known or grown up with. Um, so I felt really lonely and it added to these negative feelings and emotions that I was experiencing. Also, to get to that stage where you are sectioned or you are in crisis means that perhaps you weren't getting the help that you needed early on. You know, is there a case that you, you, you could maybe have gotten more help early on? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the nature of my trauma, no one was aware that it was happening, um, which was difficult. But the sort of signs and things that I was exhibiting that were signs of going through the trauma, um, people didn't really pick up on. So I think help could have been gotten sooner, definitely. Um, and it might have avoided the admission and the section. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what mental health services do you think really do need attention? Is it, is it the crisis teams? What is it? Um, I think the child and adolescent community mental health teams um, that are called CAMS, I think mm. they need um, a lot more attention because um, it's important that mental health is sort of picked up in someone that's young to avoid mm -hmm. them going into adult services and going through you know, all the even more trauma of being in an adult unit. Um, I also think there needs to be more money in um, mental health in a &E, which I know was discussed about 247 million to go into mental health in a &E, um, because a &E is sometimes one of the first places that you go when you begin suffering from a mental health crisis. And when you were at school, Amy, what, what did people talk about it? Was there any sort of help there at that point? Um, no, not at all. Mental health wasn't spoken about when at that time. It was um, 2007, I think. So there was no talk of mental health, <laughs> I say, back in those days. But when I was younger, there wasn't any talk. And I got horror stories about our local psychiatric hospitals mm. um, and trauma and abuse and things weren't talked about at that time either. There's been a lot more light shed on the situation, I think, especially with celebrities and people coming forward in that respect, um, which is brilliant, and it's given people the confidence to speak out. And how are you doing now, Amy? Um, I'm really well, thanks. Um, I have a website that um, I've had for five years now with almost half a million readers, um, and I really enjoy, it's called I'm Not Disordered, quick little plug there. Yeah, no, you plug away. <laughs> um, I really enjoy, I do a lot of work with Northumbria Police and my local NHS trust. Um, we do a lot of work around mental health services and improving the services within the police and their um, sort of call outs for mental health um, crisis. Um, so I do a lot of work with different organisations. Um, and You're doing well. Yes. Amy, thank, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Much appreciated. Thank um, you for having me. To show any reaction on that, we're always happy to get your reactions. 0800 234 6565 is our number.
Alfie and Anna at breakfast, thanks very much for joining us. Um, now, we've got a case that you might have seen on Sky last night on Murder Town. We speak to the mother of the victim because the local story that was on national TV. That We'll catch up with that after uh, 8 o'clock. And of course, also Jilly as well will top you up. The Metro has got this ongoing. It finishes on Sunday, but the rail replacement bus between Chichester and South Shields is having a bit of a knock-on effect. Uh, let's take a look at the weather as well.